welcome to our special show let's talk infertility i'm priyanshi sharma did you know that infertility affects approximately 15% of indian couples yet it is seldom talked about because of the stigma associated with it due to a lack of awareness of what causes infertility thousands suffer silently and do not seek help for infertility to be treated we have to understand how prevalent it is why it occurs and what we can do to resolve it and that is exactly what we aim to do through this campaign let's talk infertility over the next few weeks we hope to create awareness around a widespread issue clear some of the myths associated with infertility and answer your questions about how to treat it you can visit our website ndtv.com/letstalkinfertility for more information but also to ask your questions and concerns about IVF treatment the questions you leave on our website will be answered by specialists from art fertility clinics joining us today are dr richa jagtap co medical director at art fertility clinics india we also have dr dakshayani ravi kumar from art fertility clinics chennai dr neena malhotra also joining us who's a professor at the department of obstetrics and gynecology at aims we also have prashant sinha the co-founder and coo at moms presso and we also have rinku sha the founder at fitness to flash thanks very much to all of you for joining us my first question to you dr richa jagtap what causes infertility and what is the size and scale of this condition in india and is this a women only problem priyanshi thank you so much for this uh, question and such a important topic that we have it's like you said it's 15% of the population but probably we fail to realize it means one in six we are six of us here on this show and probably one of us could have had some issues with subfertility that's how close it is to us and we do talk about india being a country with the largest population when we have the largest population by definition it means we also have a sub group of infertile people who are also in the largest amount in our country so this is the issue which is facing us and when we say infertility it does not only mean women it will encompass both of the couple the men and the women and that's why it's important that we tackle it head on we look at it holistically and we try to address all the issues that can happen but we will talk about it only when we know that we have a safe space to open up to address our concerns and to find the right and the scientific answers from an empathetic doctor right of course that's something that all of us should know and uh, dr ravi kumar if i can come to you with my next question as i understand it reproductive medicine is a very young science what role does research play in this evolution and is enough happening across the world and in india as well uh, yes there is lots of research going ahead uh, in art fertility clinics uh, we are like uh, prolific in pro publishing many research uh, works we are doing within the center where our clinicians embryologists and the geneticists are involved uh, we have about almost uh, we are actually publishing it in uh, best international uh, um, journals of the human in the science in the field of human reproduction um, like human uh, uh, fertility sterility um, such journals and uh, it has been like in our centers within a brief uh, time of its um, uh, organization of art fertility clinics across the globe and in india we have about 72 research papers and article articles published uh, in journals like fertility and sterility and uh, these are being peer reviewed by the um senior most uh, fertility specialists across the globe and they have endorsed the work done by the clinicians researchers uh, embryologists and the geneticists in uh, india in our art fertility clinics right and adding on to that uh, prashant sinha you are from india's largest parenting platform and content platform for women and you engage with women in multiple indian languages how openly do women really talk about their infertility issues and this is just for us to understand how common the problem really is so uh, by running the largest platform in the country of women so there are 25 million women on the platform what we have seen is 
the awareness level of fertility has gone infertility has gone up in the last few years thanks to all the fertility centers talking about it openly so it's gone up uh, but we are just to give you a sense we are only 10% english platform and 90% the language platform what has come through we see is while the fertility understanding is high infertility understanding is high the quality is not understood well that means when people are talking they are, they don't know how expensive is it or you know how lengthy the process is how complicated it would it be okay so there are people who are asking questions to each other and then there are brands who are and experts who are coming and answer, answering though the process is not very well understood infertility infertility issues are understood now right and uh, while we talk about the people's awareness let's just take a look at what are the barriers to understanding and treating the infertility issue it is a common problem yet there's not enough information not enough conversation and certainly not enough awareness take a look do you know what ivf stands for uh, when the woman is not able to conceive the child uh, they undergo such processes medical processes where i guess there are many ways to conceive the baby is not uh, fertilized inside the body of the female rather the egg and the sperm is collected and it's been fertilized inside a uh, artificial lab it's like if you can't conceive there's a process where you can uh, you know there's a sperm thing that babies are being born so they are being fertilized out of the woman's body getting a child outside by using ways of test tube babies for example if matlab ki agar jo male or female agar wo nahi kar pa rahe hain baby in natural ways to unke paas ek zariya hai karne ke liye ipf it's uh, the test tube babies i just know about that is there a difference between ivf and surrogacy i don't know about it no not really I have no idea. <laughs> Surrogacy is when both of the parents give their genes, right? But in IVF, if the male is infertile, they can have a sperm donor. Uh, you are taking a, a worm outside uh, the natural uh, mother. Is infertility only a woman's issue? In India, of course, everybody blames the women. The stereotypical way in which we look at infertility is that it's the woman's problem. I would believe a male issue, ma'am. Okay. Yes, but because I've never heard, not mostly heard, female being infertile. So you heard that. Now, if I come to uh, Mr. Prashant Sinha on that, how much do women understand their infertility issues? For that matter, what is the level of awareness that you have seen in dealing with both women and men? For example, are fertility issues often confused with surrogacy? so uh, i think surrogacy is still a distant piece where people think it's still for affluent and very few, few people understand the largest issue that we see on a platform is there is around infertility while the incidence of infertility is 50% with males as well the women are to be blamed and that's where the biggest issue is, lies so i think uh, one of the big uh, platforms like us what we drive is you know um, giving her care and assurance that okay that other people have already gone through this uh, journey and then there are huge amount of success rates out there so you can possibly go and try amongst the males they are only responsible to arrange for the finances and possibly you be more rational than being emotional around it so the support that they can give to the wives is all about you know uh, being there around right and on that note dr malhotra you also deal with many kinds of patients in your experience what stops infertile couples from seeking treatment what are the barriers really uh thank you very much for having me here i think as dr richard pointed out it's a couple problem it's not a problem and prashant also said it's not a female problem but certainly i think i would put them as social factors uh their economic factors that's more and of course again their personal issues as in which again relates to socio economic so socially yes as it's seen it's still considered as a taboo and it's considered a female problem so perhaps that's one reason why they delay and uh, of course those are factors where women in the present day i'm talking of metros i'm not talking of the small b uh, or c towns or the type tier 2 tier, tier 3 or maybe the villages but uh, women and men are too much focused on their career and therefore we are realizing is it sub fertility which is uh, you know self driven by the motivation to reach up and scale their you know opportunities and jobs uh, which is i think a real impediment for them to come earlier than they actually reach us 
Right, so several factors that can turn out to be barriers actually. And uh, Brinko Shah, you're a health and fitness coach. Uh, your community, Fitness to Flash, helps women be confident and live a healthy lifestyle. Now, you also have conversations about fertility. In your experience, how open are women to talking about fertility and infertility? And how do we bring this confidence in them? Uh, what I've realized over six years of building this community uh Earlier, people were not aware or it was, as uh, everyone mentioned, it is like a taboo of even coming open saying that, you know, I have this issue, but now things are changing. One, it is changing because it's a private and safe place. So it's not like still publicly people are going to, and I'm here talking mainly about women because that's what my community is. It's only for women and uh, where they talk about. So to break the taboo, we are encouraging them more and more sharing sharing our successes, sharing our failures or sharing that empathy towards them that, you know, they can come and talk because mm -hmm. sometimes what happens, it can like this whole treatment can bog them down. They feel alone. They don't know where to seek help. Usually as social norms are maybe not very comfortable to talk with their partners or family friends. And then they come and be part of this community. So what we have seen is the more we encourage, the more people are coming together. Right, of course, that's uh, important if we want to create more awareness around this issue. And Dr. Richard Jagtap, if infertility is such an issue in India, how should fertility clinics be responding uh, to this issue? Uh, what's your opinion on that? So Priyanshi, I believe that we are always scared of what we do not know. So the first step, of course, is creating awareness so that people know that one, they are not alone in this. Two, these kind of problems exist. Three, that they can overcome it. So that is the first thing, awareness through these programs like this, through multiple platforms that we make people realize that infertility is existing between us. Second is that we try to individualize their treatment, see what is right for them, what is the right options for them, how they can tackle it, what is their body's problem, and then overcome those problems. Third is we always worry about um, IVF being fraught with risk and uh, consequences. So we are trying to have a good amalgamation of science and nature. What we are trying is making sure that IVF takes the risk out and gives back the success that the patients are coming to us for, which means like we transfer now embryos in natural cycle so that the patients can avoid too much of medication so that they are not worried about taking a lot of medication throughout their life. And it's known that when they take a lot of medication during the pregnancy, um, they can have hypertension, they can have other issues. Making natural cycle a way of norm, it is going to be really helpful for them. So right. holistically approaching it from all the sides is how we will be able to improve hmm. these things. Right, of course, a holistic approach is really necessary in this issue. And Dr. Ravi Kumar, as we've talked about this, that there's also a gender bias in understanding fertility issues. Tell us what a male infertility is about and uh, what is its instance and how does India compare with the rest of the world on this? Yeah, infertility is always thought to be a female uh, issue, especially so in India. Uh, although in the cities, there is a little bit of understanding that both can be the reason. But what we see in our clinics and uh, in the society is, I feel, the tip of the iceberg. There is so much of infertility patients down there in our population across the globe we, who are not able to reach uh, clinics. Maybe in India, it is the cost which is also stopping them from coming. In male infertility, whatever patients we are seeing here, about 40 to 50 percent of them are male infertility patients also. Some of them coming with uh, erectile dysfunctions, some of them uh, sort of into what we call as important also sometimes. And uh, many of them are having the sperm factors being abnormal. Like it could be the count, it could be the motility of the sperm, it could be the morphology of the sperm, which is all very important for a healthy embryo to be formed. Right. So while we've talked about the issue and the awareness part as well, let's now talk about solutions. Dr. Richard Jagtap, let's start by understanding what art is. And within that, what is IVF? Is IVF the only treatment for infertility? So if, we, if I break open that uh, short term art, it is assisted reproductive technologies, ART. 
which means we are trying them to have reproduction to conceive but we are helping them assisting them uh, when we talk about art it's always thought that we are talking about ivf but it's not so like dr dakshaydi mentioned that uh, assisted reproduction could be simple thing like doing an intrauterine examination where the sperm motility is low and we take the sperm sample concentrate it wash it and put it back in the uterus and rest of the things happen naturally in the body it could be ivf where its full form is in vitro fertilization where we take the eggs and we fertilize them with the sperms from the husband and let the embryos grow in a culture system and then transfer them in the womb for patients who have a very severe male factor which means as dr dakshani mentioned the sperm count is very low we can use icsi intra cytoplasmic sperm injection in which we select the best sperms and inject them in the best eggs to let them fertilize form an embryo in the culture system and then we can put this embryo back in the uterus so this is whole array of or armamentarium of treatments that we have which is what we call as assisted reproductive technologies with us right of course that's very important to point out and if i can come to you dr nina malotra now we will talk about ivf treatments and how they work in greater detail in our next shows as well but could you clear another common confusion for us what is the difference between ivf treatment ivf surrogacy and adoption so essentially as the lay person call it to test your baby uh, when we do an ivf uh, we may do just uh, you know culturing that egg around with the normal sperms or put injecting the uh, the egg with a sperm we essentially creating an embryo in the lab and that lab that embryo which is a good quality tested by the way we look at it or we have some techniques like embryoscope or do whatever you know things we put the idle embryo back into the lady's womb <laughs> ie she is the one who has the egg with her partner or husband she creates the embryo and this embryo goes back to her womb and that is what is called the conventional way now when we talk of surrogacy it is a gestational surrogate i e the embryos which are created from the genetic parents is the the, the female and the husband create uh, and give their eggs and then that is what creates an embryo but that is being put into somebody else's womb hmm. that is what essentially means a surrogate or a surrogacy which by the law would only be indicated if the woman who is is a potential or is is uh, the biological mother does not or is deprived because of any reasons which could be depriving the womb to carry this pregnancy forward right. and there are very many medical indications so that is surrogacy and by the law surrogacy has got many uh, you know ifs and buts the the surrogacy laws in place and essentially that's what we have to understand rather than somebody who reads a celebrity uh, you know baby coming and that's a surrogate and that's mm -hmm. absolutely no no for all of us who are from the science and the medical fraternity so that yeah. is what is essential and surrogacy does not connote to ivf that's something that's important coming to adoption yes there are some situations where we think we cannot offer the couple an ivf mm -hmm. uh, because there could be medical reasons uh, there could be financial reasons and they are not fit i.e. because they feel that they uh, would by choice not like to take a donor egg because she's age advanced or they would not like to take a donor sperm because of the reasons that are better understood socially right or for all the factors in those right. cases they opt to child and i think again by the law legally we know what the adoption rules are and what right. are the if and buts there as well so this right. is a bit uh, that needs clarity Right, so those distinctions are, of course, important to note. And uh, Rinku Shah, if I can come to you now, we leave the last word with you. This is an awareness campaign. You're a trained fitness and nutrition guide, and you talk about balancing one's body, hormones, and fertility through fitness. If you could tell us how fitness plays a role in a woman's fertility, and what message would you leave with all the women watching us today who may have fertility issues? yeah one thing uh, to associate uh, people say that you know when you work out more or when you are putting a lot of stress in your body uh, the ivf don't work or you know you get into the infertility zone so one message is that that is a myth uh, the only thing we say and the reason we tell them that you know maintain a healthy lifestyle when we say healthy lifestyle i'm not saying like you go into extreme of any kind of fitness or a diet we are mainly saying that you know you are stress -free. you have the real hormones which are working for you and which needs to work for you when you are even undergoing a treatment and that's what 
I, I have been through my own IVF, so I know it. And that's what I usually tell to my community as well. That stress is one. Second is balancing your, uh, get that oxytocin in coming in and you know making sure that the hormones are working for you and uh, third is have that kind of community support wherever you can find support because that is super super important and we always say it's not about the weight it's always about the health so don't go extreme or drastic on losing your weight just because you want to undergo a treatment I know it is associated but whatever you do with a positive mindset is going to really really work for you. With that, it's a wrap on the show. Thanks very much to all our guests for joining us. And as we said earlier, over the next few weeks, we will be answering all your questions about infertility, what causes it, how to treat it, and much more through our shows and through our website. You can visit our website, ndtv.com slash Let's Talk Infertility for more information and to leave us your questions, which will be answered by specialists from Art Fertility Clinics over our next few shows. To end the show, let's hear from couples for whom IVF has worked as a solution. Uh, Dr. Dakshayani was the one who did my fertility treatment and uh, she was the one who delivered my twin baby boys also. She also took care of my delivery and bringing up my kids and all that. So that is uh, besides the issue. The thing about fertility is that Dr. Dakshayani is uh, one person who was very very thorough in explaining what exactly the concept is. IVF and all, I am not aware of this IVF and all. But later on, when I explained it by Dr. Dakshan, it's very, very comfortable for uh, me and for my wife also to proceed. And I would like to uh, sincere, uh, convey my sincere thanks to Dr. Dakshan. She's one of the best doctors, I can say.